Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Anna Elaine. I specialise in pale skin beauty tutorials as well as some lifestyle and other good bits as well. Today I'm doing a video very much inspired, like 100% inspired by Lauren Curtis and Stephanie Lang. They recently did these sort of videos where they used the same products um, but got completely different results on either side. Stephanie kind of did hers a wee bit more to be like um, a good application and some sort of, you know, more tragic application on the other side and Lauren did hers a little bit more similar to how I'm doing it where she did like a full coverage sort of intense dramatic side and then a very wearable natural side. Now I really did want to try and take inspiration from them but also come up with something that was a little bit different for my version. This is for like very ultra fair skin and it's using a bunch of really cult favorites here on YouTube even a few that perhaps you didn't know would work for pale skin. So I hope you find it entertaining and insightful and educational. If you do enjoy it, don't forget to give this video a like for me so I know that you enjoy these sort of videos. And also subscribe if you want to see more pale skin tutorials and beauty advice. So starting out with foundation, I had a little look through my collection and I thought about a product that was like super hyped and super popular for quite some time. I feel like the hype behind it has certainly died down a little bit over the last wee while, while new products have come out and stuff, but for a while this was like extremely hard to get your hands on, especially in the shade you wanted, and very cult status here on YouTube. It is, of course, the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation. So this is gonna be my full coverage side. You actually don't need much of this product anyway to get really good coverage. That's probably gonna be quite a lot. And to get the most coverage, I'm going to use a brush for the side. I'm using the EXO Beauty Round Face Brush. And I'm just going to sort of press this into my skin. Using a brush, I find, gives the most coverage with this foundation. This is in the shade Ivory Light as well. I don't think I mentioned that. <laughs> it's a really good shade if you're really pale. It does look a little bit too pale on me in the viewfinder, but it matches a lot better in real life, but this is probably as pale as I can go. Any paler and it is a bit too light for me. Right, so there's one half of my face. As you can see, it's just like total coverage. It's basically covered up all of that makes me me. <laughs> and on the other side, I'm just going to use a very minimal amount of product and a dab beauty blender. I don't think this foundation works quite as well with a beauty blender, in my opinion. It's designed to be total coverage. Um, so I think the brush does work best, but you could, if you were in a pinch, share it out and just use it with the Beauty Blender for a little bit of a wash of coverage. For concealer, I'm going in with the very, very cult favourite Tarte Shape Tape, and this is in the shade Fair Neutral. I don't actually need to put any on any blemishes on the side. I just simply don't need to because the foundation is so full coverage, but I will put a tiny bit with a very lightweight brush just on a couple of little blemishes down here. I find if you want to really like coverage the best thing to just get a brush and just lightly tap it onto the stick rather than applying the wand onto the face otherwise too much product comes off. And then on this side I'm just gonna do the old traditional way too much concealer. <laughs> um, however I will use my beauty blender to blend that out just because it does give a nicer finish I think than a brush. Now when I was thinking about powder for this look I don't actually really own that many cult favorite powders. I don't own the Laura Mercier translucent powder, I don't own the RCMA powder. So I thought about one that um, was a lot more popular probably back in the day and people still definitely use it, it's just not like hyped these days. It's the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural and I've got the shade Light. Um, a lot of people love this and it is one of those OG products you kind of just always have around. Um, on this side I'm going to apply a lot, even though I don't need it because this foundation is so matte, but it does move actually a little bit. It's not the most long wearing if you don't set it, so I'm just gonna like <laughs> go hard. And then on this side I'm gonna take my beauty blender, just add a little bit of powder and just kind of press it over the areas we added a little bit of concealer. Eyebrows are different colours now because there's so much foundation in this one. Um, for contour I picked a cult classic here for the pale community. It's the NYX Taupe Blush. This is like an, this is the HD version so it's a little bit more pigmented than the original NYX Taupe Blush. Um, this, yeah, every pale beauty guru and pale beauty enthusiast owns this blush. It's like the classic. It was my very first contouring colour. 
I'm going to use my NARS ITA brush on the full coverage side, which you can use very light handedly as well. But I'm really going to go, go to town. Woo! <laughs> That's so intense. And I might as well go all out. And then on this side, I'm just going to use whatever's left on the brush and just add like just a little bit of shadow. I don't even need much. Now for bronzer, I picked the NARS Laguna bronzer. This is the original formula because this is the one that really made cult status here on YouTube. It's going to help make my contour look a little bit more natural. And even though this is a kind of bronzer that generally people with sort of light to medium skin tones use, you can actually make it work for pale skin. I actually think the tone of it is really nice on very fair skin. You just have to use a lighter hand, but today I'm just going to be quite heavy handed just to go with this sort of look. And then again, tap it, wipe off some of the excess on the back of your hand, and then just add a really light wash. So you wouldn't keep dipping into the product. If you want a light finish, dip it in the product, wipe a bit off on the back of your hand, and then just softly warm up your complexion. Now for blush, there were a few I was looking at using. I mean, NARS Orgasm's a classic, but I did want to add a few more drugstore products. So I went with Milani Luminoso. So we'll start with the full coverage side. I'm using my Surat Beauty Blush Brush, which usually is really good at not adding too much color. So I might have to um, take a while to build this up. I'm not tapping off the excess with this. I'm just swishing the product in. And then really swirling around. I'm also going to take that a little bit up onto my temples as well. And then for the light side, same deal. Apply, wipe. And I'm only going to apply that just here on the apple. Picking a highlighter was actually a bit of a harder decision because I do have quite a few like cult favorite ones. Um, Becca was what first came to my mind, but I don't own any of the really like famous colors. Like I don't own Champagne Pop and Opal because they are, in my opinion, just too dark for pale skin. That just doesn't work on me. But I have Moonstone and Pearl and they're not quite as popular on, in the YouTube scene. So I went with like an OG cult product. Like everyone owned this. And this was kind of the first amazingly super pigmented highlighter that came on the market. It's the, the Balm Mary Luminizer. And mine is all cracked and old. This is like a four year old product. So <laughs> just gonna start with my intense side and apply a lot. I haven't used this probably in like a year. And so, ooh, I've forgotten how nice that is. I'm just gonna use a little eyeshadow brush to do down my nose because I only want it strong on one side. <laughs> And then I'm just going to apply a really light wash of this, whatever's left on the brush, to the side. And I'm only really going to apply it to my cheeks and temple, and also a little on the cupid's bow. Now when I think about brow products on YouTube, I usually think Anastasia, Beverly Hills, and Benefit. I don't own any Anastasia, so I'm going to go with my Benefit products, which I think the OG one that really stood out to me as being like a cold product was the Gimme Brow, so definitely going to use that. But to actually fill in, sort of shape my brow a bit more, I'm going to use the Cabrow and Pre Precisely My Brow pencil. These are in shade 2 and the Gimme Brow is in shade 3. So we'll start with the intense side because I usually do my brows kind of somewhere between like a super intense brow and a natural brow. So we'll start with the intense side. That's all I usually do with a brow pencil, and then I go in with the pomade, and then shape the rest of my brow. And then add my gimme brow. And then on the natural side, I'm mainly going to stick with my little pencil for the most part of the brow. I don't do that very severe line underneath. I just do a few extra strokes at the start of my brow. And then I just add some extra little hairs to the tail where I'm missing kind of, I've got a kind of missing bit out of my brow there. Then I'll go in with a really tiny, tiny bit of the cabrow, the pomade. 
and just run that slightly under the brow like that. And then I take my Gimme Brow and I really wipe off a lot of the excess, so it's just a little bit of brow gel on there. For my eyeshadows, I chose the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette. I don't think anyone could say this isn't a good palette. You know, even if it's not so much of a cup of tea, it's a fantastic palette. So I might actually start with the natural side for this. I'm just gonna go in with this really light cream shade, do a wash of color with that all over the lid, and then take my little crease brush and go in with this sort of warm toned crease color, and then just run a little bit of that into the crease. I'm gonna take my flat shaded brush and take a little bit of the shimmery highlight color and just place a little bit of that, like a little wash of that all over the lid and into the inner corner. With the other side, I'm still gonna lay down a cream base just to give my shadows sort of something to blend into. You can see I've got quite a bit of highlight under my brow just from my Mary Lou. Start with that really warm toned shade and don't tap it off too much, like kind of go in for a, a decent amount of pigment. Then go in with this deeper sort of crease shade tap it off a little bit. I always tap it off even if I want a lot of pigmentation because it avoids fallout and it also avoids getting like a bunch of pigment all in one spot. You're better off to keep dipping and dipping into the product. So run out and so then put more on, tap off excess and then keep going in. Then I'm going to add a little bit more of this deeper burgundy shade to the outer part of the eye. I might put it sort of all over. I'm going to take my hourglass number four brush, which is a very sort of precise crease brush. I'm just going to make this really smoky. I'm going to wet my brush, my little flat shader brush, and we're going to go in first with this color, which is like a shimmery rose gold, and really pack this onto the lid. And then flip that brush over and take a little bit of the highlight shade. really pack this on here. Just using a little bit of this deep dark brown, just going to take that number four hourglass brush and just really define the crease. It kind of looks like a soft cut crease. And blend up and out. Now I don't think I have a very like cult sort of favorite um, eyeliner. I just have the Zoeva Graphic Eyes. I haven't heard like heaps of people rave about this, but I just don't really own anything else that lots of people rave about. So this is a black pencil liner, kind of standard. I'm gonna use it quite differently on this eye to how I would use it on this eye. For this dramatic eye, I'm gonna tight line and kind of smudge it out. And then just grab my pencil brush to kind of smoke that out on the lower lash line. And then add a little bit to the top lash line as well. Like quite a bit there and really smoke that out as well. Then on this side, I'm just going to apply it only to the top lashes and only on the outer third. I use a similar technique for both sides. I just add a lot more on the side and then do the tight lining as well. Then for mascara, I'm using the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. Just do a light amount on this side and only to the top lashes. And then do as much as I possibly can on the other side. For lips, I'm gonna use two products that were like hugely popular and really cult status here on YouTube a couple of years ago, especially for like fall makeup tutorials. It was kind of like the fall look. Uh, it's using Max Night Moth Lip Pencil and Max Rebel. And I chose these because obviously they're very dramatic colors, but I wanted to show you how you could use them super dramatically on the side and then a bit more subtly on this side. So on my dramatic side, I'm gonna completely fill in that half of the lip with the lip pencil and then go on top with Rebel. I definitely did a tutorial a few years ago. It was like a winter tutorial using this lip combo. So when I say that everyone used it, it was me included. So there's lip liner done on that side. On this side, all I'm going to do is define the outer corner of my lip.
And on the subtle side, I'm just going to dab it with my finger. And it leaves the most beautiful berry stain on your lips. So these are the two final looks, a bunch of cult favorite products here on YouTube used in completely different ways. It just shows how versatile makeup can be and how it's sometimes not so much about the makeup but more about the tools and the, the skills that you use. I hope you guys enjoyed my take on this tutorial today and found it useful and insightful. Maybe you learned a few more things. If you did enjoy it, then please give this video a big thumbs up. If you want to see my last tutorial for pale skin, I will link that up here so you can go watch that now. And if you want to subscribe to me so you get more updates on lots of pale skin makeup tutorials, you can click on my face down here. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!